it's good to be back. Much of society's collective nostalgia for the strange and frankly rather silly decade of the 80s can be attributed to two companies, Polaroid and Kodak. These two juggernauts of the photography industry are unique in their own rights uh, with very storied um, s stories, um, but in particular for Kodak, the mid-80s were a pretty strange time. Um, they were competing with Polaroid for uh, shares in the instant print photography market, um, but as a result, they kind of got into a legal battle uh, over various patents. And in um, uh, January of 1986, they were uh, forced to pull all of their instant cameras from store shelves. And this cleared the way for Polaroid instant cameras to eventually become overpriced pieces of nostalgic hipster memorabilia sold exclusively through Urban Outfitters. And at $160, what a steal! Um, or you could just get one at Goodwill for five bucks. Please don't, don't buy it from... It's just, it seems that Kodak had already been making plans to make it back into consumers' hearts and, more importantly, their wallets. Uh, just a few months after their legal issues with Polaroid came to a rather costly close, Kodak made their re-entry into the 35mm point-and-shoot market following a 17-year absence. Cue the VR35 series. Smile. Kodak introduced us. The automatic up into it. All you do is aim and shoot it. You put the film in. You close it, you open it, and you shoot it. Bingo. Kodak VR35. 35 millimeter is so simple. It focuses, it dances. It rewinds by itself. Great shot. <laughs> Fantastic. I can shoot with a 35 millimeter camera. This one. <laughs> All you do is aim and shoot it. Kodak VR35. I love this camera. It's new. I've actually got a few different cameras from the VR35 line, but today I want to talk about the K12, one of the more feature-heavy models. First off, it's got a DeLorean flap, um, which is what drew it to me, drew me to it in the first place. Because how cool! Uh, I don't know, maybe it's something about the mid '80s where they were just like, let's make things flap up. Um, but the flap also acts as a sort of on and off switch. It's not really an on and off switch. Um, but you can't take pictures when the flap is down. And that's because there's a little infrared sensor right there that's covered up whenever it's down. So you can't really take a picture without it, um, with it down. So yeah. Um, and as a point and shoot, basically everything is automated, um, except for actually taking the picture of course um, it sets the film speed automatically it flashes when it thinks there's not enough light it winds it loads blah blah blah, blah. Um, and I've talked some before about my qualms with this tendency towards a lack of manual controls in point and shoots but I mean you know that's why they're called point and shoots you you point it and you shoot it and it does the rest um, so, yeah, I can't really fault it for being what it's meant to be. And besides, uh, the stuff that's encompassed in this 12-ounce little plastic light box is really pretty terrific. The K12 actually launched alongside the K10, uh, but at a higher price point. Uh, $200 in whatever mid-1980s money converts to today uh, compared to 130 But it was well worth the extra bucks. More bang. Uh, with the pricier price came featurey features. Uh, really, it just has better equipment throughout. Um, the K12 has a four-element lens that's uh, rated pretty fast at uh, f/2.8, so um, you can. It's pretty decent in low light situations, and of course, it does have the auto flash. Um, it also has a better autofocus system. It's um, eight levels which compares or which allows a smoother and more uh, defined and crisp focus. Um, so you can get some pretty neat, um, maybe not bokeh effects, but um, it's, it's a sharper focus 
more definition uh, than the three level um, the autofocus system in the K10. Um, beyond that, uh, main differences are the shorter flash recharge time and it actually winds automatically um, or advances the film automatically. With the K10, there's like a, you know, one of the little thumb wheel things. I'm using a standard 9 volt battery uh, to power all the camera's functions, but um, when the uh, when the VR35 line was released, Kodak also came out with their own proprietary line of lithium batteries uh, for use with their cameras, and I get, uh, I mean, yeah, I guess it would just be their cameras. You couldn't really use it for anything else because it's shaped completely differently. Um, I think it would be pretty cool to get my hands on one of those, even though I'm sure the charge would just be long gone. Um, I mean, all that aside, you know, how does it actually shoot? Um, let's take a quick look inside before we load up the film. The back opens with a fairly satisfying pop, and it's a pretty straightforward design inside. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's a camera. There's only so much that's different between them. Um, the barrel is lined with what looks like some sort of velvety material. Ooh, I'm not sure what the purpose of that is, or if it actually has any advantage over the standard plastic, um, but it sure does look cozy. And the foam inside right here is actually held up remarkably well considering it's 30 years old. Loading the camera is a breeze. Um, I've got my go-to uh, Fuji Color 400 speed film, uh, so we'll just put it in and see what happens. Um, you put it in and you pull the film leader across to the little yellow line here in the corner. Uh, you'll close the back and the camera does the rest. Out of the auto loaders I've used, the K12 has probably the most reliable loading system. Um, for instance, the Olympus AFLT is sometimes a little particular about uh, how exactly you put the film inside. Uh, if you don't have it just right, uh, you can close the door and hear the mechanism trying to pull the film onto the take-up spool, but uh, I don't know, maybe the sprockets don't quite engage the film or whatever, um, and you're just left guessing as to whether or not you actually have a properly loaded camera. Comparatively, the K12 is loaded up without a hitch every single time I've used it. So Inside the viewfinder here, we have two sets of illuminated brackets. Um, the outer set shows the boundaries of the frame you're shooting, of course, and uh, the inner set indicates kind of the, I guess, the autofocus priority, uh, pretty much yeah, I guess it's a uh, center prioritized things that are closer to the middle of the frame are more likely to be in focus. As I mentioned before, um, there is no way to disable the flash. Um, if the K12 thinks that there's not enough light, the flash will go off. So um, you do have the option, however, to manually activate the flash. Um, you can just push the little fill flash lever sort of switch thing. Um, yeah, pretty much the only other setting you have control over is setting the self-timer. And that's pretty much it as far as features go for the uh, K12. So uh, it's, I'm going to go shoot something. So uh, I got some pictures from the first roll of film that I shot with the K12. Um, I Since I've moved, I started going to this place called Ball Photo, and they just they do amazing work. Um, if you're in the area of the Appalachian, well, I guess Appalachian is like 2,000 some miles long. If you're in the Blue Ridge Mountains area, um, check out Ball Photo. They, you will not regret it. Um, they can, they can help you with. Um, everything from camera repairs to supplying you with darkroom chemicals and all sorts of stuff and uh, they'll actually uh, develop and print out your film for a good like I'd say on average between 40 and 50 percent cheaper than say like a one hour photo at Walgreens um, so yeah check them out if you're in the area this picture right here I was trying to do something kind of cool I don't know nice and symmetric and whatnot but uh this it's the the front of this rail right here is still a little blurry and i think that's because i wasn't quite far enough away from it um the k12 has a minimum focal distance of uh 
uh, three feet, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, three feet. So if you're closer than three feet to your object, it's gonna be a little blurry. Um, so that's one of the one of the few drawbacks to the VR35. It's not really a, a macro sort of camera, but I mean, I wouldn't expect it to be. It's a point and shoot, so um, unless you're getting all up in people's faces and shooting them, don't do that. Um, yeah, all right, so here's the next one. I like this one because, well, I like them all because I'm an amazing photographer. Um, I shot it like this in portrait mode. Um, I guess you call it portrait mode. Mode? I don't know. Um, I, I don't know, I was just shooting it. And when I got it, when I first pulled it out of the, the pack after it was developed, I saw it like this and I was like, I. What what is this? I don't know what I'm looking at. Um, but yeah, no, it's just looking down an escalator. But turned on its side, it has these really nice shapes and kind of very nice rounded Z axis. I guess I, I don't know. I just wasn't expecting to see that when I uh, pulled it out. Um, so yeah, and these couple pictures right here really show off how annoying it is that you can't disable the flash. Um, so, yeah, you know, if you're shooting any sort of reflective surface, that flash is going to pop right back into the lens and just frustrate you to no end, especially if there's fingerprints on the surface. So, yeah, no bueno. But, um, yeah, this, uh, this picture right here, I tried to, you know, see what would happen if I just covered up the flash. And um, it, I don't know, I wouldn't say it worked, but... I mean, because you can still see the flash spilling over it a little bit, um, but at least you don't get the horrible blast back of light. So, yeah. Apparently on the K14, um, you can. there's actually the option to disable the flash, which I don't know why they wouldn't put that on every single camera, but it's such a simple thing. Like, whatever. Um, ah, I like this one. Uh, this, is, uh, this might be my favorite. I don't know. If not, it's definitely my second favorite um, of the bunch that I shot. Uh, me and my brother went to this. <clears throat> me and my brother uh, went to this. Uh, I guess derelict mall. It wasn't abandoned. There were like two or three shops in there, but um, it's just this wide open, empty space that just has sh so many different things that you can shoot. Um, and that's where all of these were taken. Um, but yeah, I like I like this one because to me it looks like a a frame from a Wes Anderson movie. Um, so yeah, uh, maybe it could be like a Space Odyssey sort of thing too. But yeah, it's a wide open, brightly lit kind of lines going everywhere. <laughs> this one's just kind of silly to me. I mean, because maybe it's just me, but to me. Um, this is so obviously not an emergency exit. I don't, I don't know, whatever. Um, and, uh, so I told my brother Clint to go stand against this wide open blank wall, uh, cause he had a red shirt on and I wanted to, you know, pop a color and whatnot. But of course he goes and stands and just stares directly at the wall. So, uh, <laughs> kind of turned out a little silly, but, um, yeah. Now this this shot is probably definitely my favorite from the bunch. Um, it shows off again the the detail and the texture that you can get with the uh, K12, and uh, it's uh, compositionally it's pretty interesting um, because it, it's just like these uh, rectangles that kind of fill the fill the frame. Um, but yeah, it shows off. Um, I wasn't expecting the lens to be able to get such a shallow depth of field. Um, and so that was a pleasant surprise. And that's pretty much it for this kind of reintroductory episode sort of thing um, of camaraderie. Uh, thanks for sticking with me as I go over the VR35K12 from Kodak. Um, I'm kind of trying out a few different format sort of things um, with this episode. So let me know what you think uh, you can write it in the comments um you can subscribe subscribing would be cool you know it's a thing to do these days so i hear um 
have a Twitter. Follow me. Or don't. Um, you know, just do whatever you want, man. Um, or woman. Or in between. Um, well, don't do whatever you want. Because people can be pretty nasty sometimes. Don't, like, go and purge a bunch of people. Um, I'm not, not all about that. Um, 